And let's bring in my own quarterback guru. That would be one Babe Laufenberg to talk about the Cowboys and the draft. And Babe, when you hear Stephen and Jerry say that this draft is about defense, defense, and more defense, do you believe them? Uh, absolutely I do because they watched the games last year <laughs> like the rest of us. And the defense was just historically bad. Couldn't stop anybody. Couldn't stop them on the ground. Had a difficult time through the air. So uh, I look at Carolina last year, Bill Jones. They became the first team in NFL history to devote the, their entire draft to defense. First time that's ever happened. Happened a couple times on offense, but never on defense. If the Cowboys walked away from this draft drafting nothing but defensive players, I'd be a happy man. Okay, well, let's talk quarterbacks a little bit here because the story of this offseason around the league has been the quarterbacks. We got Matthew Stafford, we got Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, Sam Darnold, all changing teams uh, during this offseason. This game is all about the quarterback, isn't it, babe? Certainly is, and I think everybody knows that now. A lot of people have been preaching it for the last 10 to 20 years, but it never has it been. Uh, more relevant than it is today. And I always say this too, Bill, people talk about the investment of money that they put into these quarterbacks and draft capital. Obviously, most of these quarterbacks taken in the top five picks in recent drafts, uh, going back five, six years, they've all had to trade up and give up a bundle to get them. But it's not the draft picks. It's not the money. It's the investment in time because you put into a guy four years thinking he's going to be your savior. He's going to be the guy to get you there. And four years down the road, you're starting over again. And you've seen it in Jacksonville. It's going to happen to them. They had Blake Bortles, I believe the third pick in the draft. When he came out, well, here comes Trevor Lawrence this year. See it with Chicago, Mitch Trubisky, right? They put four years into him. That didn't work out. He's now going to be a backup in Buffalo. So, again, it's not the investment in money. It's the investment in time in these guys. All right, there could be five quarterbacks go before the Cowboys pick at number 10. You got Trevor Lawrence going number one at Jacksonville, Zach Wilson to the Jets. The intriguing thing, what does San Francisco do at number three? In choosing between, let's say, Justin Fields and Mac Jones, which one is the better fit for Kyle Shanahan's offense? Well, I think that's a good question that you pose, Bill, which is the better fit. Not necessarily going to be the better quarterback. We don't know that. Of course, we don't know anything. <laughs> When you draft these guys, I always say you draft them and then you hope they become the guy that you thought they would. But you look at Justin Fields, 4-4 four, four something on his pro day. Uh, I just think in that Kyle Shanahan offense, which is very similar to the Mike Shanahan offense, so much of it is bootleg and rollout uh, for the quarterback that Justin Fields would appear to be the better fit for San Francisco. What kind of intrigues me a little bit there is obviously at three, they didn't know who was going to be available. So they would have had to be happy with whoever was available. You knew Trevor Lawrence would be gone. It does appear the Jets are going to go Zach Wilson. But if that changes, you've got to be happy with who's ever sitting there. Typically, when teams have moved up into that top spot, it's either been day of the draft where they move up and they can see who's there, or in a situation like the Goff carson Wentz draft, Philadelphia moved up knowing that Wentz would be there at two and Goff would be taken at one. So a little bit different for San Francisco trading to three and hoping the guy that they like is going to be there. And then there's North Dakota State's Trey Lance, only 318 career college passes. It's pretty amazing with that small a sample size that he's being considered as a top five pick. What would Bill Parcells say about that? <laughs> uh, Bill Parcells would probably say, Tell him I'm worried. Somebody would say, oh, you don't need to worry about that, Bill. He's only thrown 317 passes. He'd say, yeah, tell him I'm worried. And obviously, he loved the three-year starter. Jason Garrett was the same way. Wanted a guy that had played a lot and played at the highest level. Uh, Trey Lance is neither of those. Hasn't played at the highest level, albeit a very good program at North Dakota State, as we well know. And again, just such a small sample size to, to go up and say, I'm going to hitch my wagon to this guy for the next 10 years. And when you look... To me, the most recent example of that is the guy we talked about earlier, Mitch Trubisky. He had 13 starts at North Carolina, and suddenly I think they kind of manufactured him to be the second pick in the draft. And obviously, again, he's four years later, he's going to be on his second team. And as you well know, that was the same draft that Patrick Mahomes was taken at number 10 by Kansas City. So 
I, I can think that every time that Chicago Bears fans, excuse me, that Chicago Bear fan looks at Patrick <laughs> Mahomes, they say, you mean we could have had him? So it, it'll be an interesting thing. And as you well know, nothing makes these drafts more intriguing than the quarterbacks. We've all seen them. We've all got opinions. I mean, anybody that watches a game has an opinion on the quarterback. Well, you won't have an opinion, let's say, on a center or a guard. You, you never really watch them. Uh, draft people do. You do with the green book. But the average fan does not. They all are experts on quarterbacks. You go back to five years ago, the quarterbacks in the 2016 draft, and Dak Prescott is the last man standing with the team that drafted him. What is it that has impressed you the most over the last five years, Dak's development in this league? I would say just that he's the same guy. And the one thing about that contract, when you give a guy a contract like he just received, you always have to look at it and say, how's this guy going to react to the money? Uh, I don't think it matters to Dak. Obviously, it matters to his accountant, <laughs> matters to his agent. Uh, but the money is not what motivates Dak. And I think that's the, the beauty of Dak Prescott. And I think, too, uh, he, he's gotten better each year. Obviously, we only got five games out of him last year before – uh, he broke his ankle against the New York Giants, but he, he seems to add a little something more to his game every year, which is pretty remarkable because obviously his rookie season, he goes out and goes 13-3 and three as a starter. But I think you know you're getting the same guy. And it, it's funny, Bill, the, when he was drafted, I'm in the locker room, it's a mini camp, and I just went up and introduced myself. And I walked away saying, this guy's got a little something. Now, didn't know he'd become what he did, but just the way he carried himself, and you see it through his leadership with his football team and really leading the organization. He, he's just a tremendous individual. Cowboys are in the market for a backup quarterback. They're always in the market for a backup quarterback. You did <laughs> two Texas A&M games this year. What do you think of Kellen Mond? Boy, I think uh, I like him. I like him as a college quarterback. Uh, competitive. Uh, game matters to him. Uh, I think he led his team well. I saw him play against both uh, Florida and LSU. Those are the two games I did. I just don't know if he's a good enough passer, not a real natural thrower. And I always look for that when I'm watching quarterbacks and just the naturalness uh, of their delivery. Is it, is it smooth? Is it? He just looks like a guy that's almost been overcoached in terms of how he throws the ball. Uh, again, I, the makeup is such that I wouldn't count him out but I just don't know if he's a good enough passer to go to the next level. Okay, we are about to unveil my big green notebook Cowboys seven round mock draft, babe. I know you're anxiously anticipating that, but I need your input on this. I want to draft a backup quarterback for the Cowboys. You posted a picture earlier this week. You were with Sam Ellinger, the Texas quarterback. I like a lot about him, but give me somebody I can draft for the Cowboys on the third day. Yeah, and I feel the same way about him that I do about Kellen Mond. Great college quarterbacks, great competitors. Uh, love having him on your football team. And, I, again, I would not count him out in terms of making it, but just not sure if he's a good enough passer to do it at the NFL level. Uh, the guy I love is about 15 miles away from the star. You just go south down the tollway <laughs> and you go uh, say hello to Shane Bouchel. Uh, I think he's the same character kind of guy, but I just think he's a little bit better passer. And I would not be surprised if Shane Bouchelle has the type of career that Colt McCoy or a Chase Daniel, uh, guys that are very familiar to Cowboy fans here, obviously one playing at uh, Texas and the other being right up the road here at South Lake High School, as you well know, being the mayor of South Lake, Bill. But uh, <laughs> I see him as a guy that's going to have a six to ten year career as a backup in the league. And if, if he was sitting there in the sixth round or there about sixth or seventh, uh, there's no question in my mind I would go get him. And, babe, what must the Cowboys get out of this draft? <laughs> Again, like we talked at the top, defense, defense, and more defense. Uh, they're really, at all the offensive positions, they are set for the most part. Wide receiver, quarterback, running back. Uh, offensive line, if they can keep them healthy, you can never have enough offensive linemen. But other than that, uh, you go defensively. It's not a position. I wouldn't take a linebacker because they're already investing so much money in Jalen Smith and Leighton Vander Esch. And anymore, you don't play three linebackers. You don't need three linebackers on your team. 
But pass rusher corner can never have enough of them. And obviously they look, they appear to be a team that's going to take a, a corner with that number 10 pick. Finally, babe, you've been around Jerry Jones a long time. How much do you think Jerry would pay to take one little peek inside the big green NFL draft scouting notebook this week? <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Bill. I don't think he has enough money. I do not think he has enough money. If the only way he could get that money together, it's like a guy getting bail, right? He'd have to sell the planes. He'd have to sell the yacht. He'd have to sell the helicopter. He would be flying in a Cessna, okay, the smallest Cessna available, and he'd be driving like a 72 Pinto to the star every day in order to afford the Bill Jones Green Notebook. That's what I drive to the star every day, my 1972 Pinto. <laughs> but that's my choice. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. I traded in my 1967 Rambler for it.